Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this week's edition of Green as Gold, a live broadcast brought to you by Zim Papers Television Network, ZTN, in partnership with Hevels. I'm Blessing Munati. Now, today's show is the fifth in a series of discussions around the crucial area of uh, renewable energy. This program is made possible, of course, through the Green and Inclusive Energy Program by Hevels, an initiative that aims to address the energy poverty situation in Southern Africa and also increase clean energy access, especially to the marginalized groups now globally more than 1 billion people lack access to sustainable energy services and with a common power deficit problem in southern Africa and despite uh, Zimbabwe's great potential energy poverty remains widespread uh, with an estimated 66 uh, 60 3% of the population lacking uh, reliable energy access. Now, our topic today is exploring the full potential of renewable energy in the country. And uh, during the course of the show, feel free to engage us uh, through our social media platforms on Facebook, uh, Zen Papers TV Network, as well as on Twitter, ZTN News. Now, remember, over the past four weeks, we have looked at renewable energy under cooking in COVID-19. Uh, we looked at the role of youth that they have to play in the renewable energy space. And we also highlight financing as a barrier while exploring the vast uh, financial options around green energy and in our preceding episode we had Zimbabwe's energy minister Fortune Chassis and we were exploring the opportunities that are presented by the net metering concept so to help me in today's discussion exploring the full potential of renewable energy in Zimbabwe I'm joined by two gentlemen who I'd like to kindly ask to introduce themselves while giving us a short background of their renewable energy work that they're currently pursuing, uh, starting with you, sir. Uh, thank you, Blessing. Uh, my name is Victor Utedzi. I'm a director of uh, Central Grid. Central Grid is a PV power uh, company. We are based in Nyabira. We are on the 35 kilometer peg on the Arari to Chirundu Highway. We have been licensed by Zera to develop a 25 megawatt PV solar plant there. Uh, we commissioned our phase one with a capacity of uh, two and a half megawatts in at the beginning of August last year. So we are now going to a stage where we're celebrating uh, our first anniversary of supplying uh, clean, reliable and cheap power to Zimbabwe. And we're looking forward to expanding uh, that facility. Thank you. Great. Uh, so good to have you on the program. Thank you, Blessing. Uh, thank you, Blessing. Um, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, my name is uh, Tafaz Gomdija. Um, uh, I represent a company called uh, Solgas Energy. We are an independent power producer, also licensed by Zimbabwe Energy Regulatory Authority. Um, currently, we are building our first phase uh, 5 megawatt solar PV plant in Wange at uh, Cross Mabali. Uh, eventually, we hope to be able to feed a total of 50 megawatts, um, adding 15 megawatts in the second phase and 30 megawatts in the third phase. Um, to commission the 50, uh, hopefully by the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, so Solgas is, uh, is, is basically a company that we started um, back in 2015. Uh, myself and uh, my co-founder, Petros Kazungu, with uh, uh, the chief executive officer, Kingston Kamba, coming in a year later to, um, to lead the organization. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to have you on the show, uh, Tafazo. Thank you. Now, starting with you, Victor, um, I just want you to tell us why is renewable energy, you know, pivotal for a country like Zimbabwe? What are the opportunities that lie within this sector? You know, we as a country, we are, we are endowed with, um, you know, abundance of resources for production of renewable energy, PV, solar. We have good uh, also wind resources as well, something we don't talk about, you know, as a country. Mm -hmm. But the abundance of uh, PV solar in the country is well established. We are in that region of the world where we get good radiation for production of PV solar. So, so it's actually good for the country. Going forward from the time from around 2012 coming down, you know, to, to the time that we are now, prices of PV solar, mm -hmm. you know, have come down rapidly. Um, you know, PV solar is now no longer an alternative. PV solar is now mainstream, is now established technology, which is available and is being deployed widely all over the world. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, well-developed countries are now, you know, pushing, uh, you know, renewable energy. And 
it is probably the best way for us to electrify rapidly. When you said in your introduction, only 63 or so of our, uh, you know, for our about 63% of our population has actually not seen, you know, electricity in their homes. So we're talking of close to almost 10 million people, Zimbabweans, uh, that have not seen electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, the methods that we're using previously, you know, rural electrification, uh, pulling, you know, transmission lines to be able to reach people, I think they've now, they, 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 yes, we can continue with them, but PV solar will be quick, number one, will be cheap, number two, and it's available technology that we can deploy uh, to our people in a very affordable manner to be able to change the face of this country from an electrification perspective. Mm -hmm. Tafazo, do you agree with uh, Victor? Least cost uh, technology towards renewables, is this the solution for the country? Most definitely I agree with Victor. Um, it's renewable energy right now, we're talking of opportunities of around 1,100 megawatts. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the National um, Renewable Energy Policy launched uh, in March this year by the, uh, the president. Um, look, uh, there's so much, uh, there's so many opportunities to actually invest in renewable energy. Um, this 1,100 1, 1, megawatts is uh, supposed to have been deployed by 2025. This is very much um, achievable, but there are quite a number of fundamentals that we need to, to address in order to be able to meet the, the, target of the, the, the target and eventually meet also the target of 2,100 megawatts by 2030. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tafatwa uh, highlighting the issue of the targets that we have, 1,100 by 2025. Um, I, I know you've worked on projects that have had as, as high as 6,000 megawatts before. What do we need to do? to get to this target? Uh, to me, it's, it's a financing challenge. Um, 1,100 megawatts of PV solar you know, capacity, plus the transmission integration and things like that, distribution facilities, we're looking at, at the very least, maybe let's say a billion dollars of financing uh, that we must deploy over the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, that's you know, you know, looking roughly at almost two hundred million dollars of annual spend, uh, largely in PV solar, you know, in the country, it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, like Zimbabwe, like any country, you've got two primary sources of financing for schemes like that: your domestic capital markets mm -hmm. and, of course, foreign investors. Uh, even established countries like South Africa that have been successful in deploying large-scale renewable energy have also had to depend on foreign investors. We will need foreign investors. We will need a lot of money from foreign investors to be able to successfully de uh, deploy such a scheme in this country. Mm -hmm. And of course, investors, whether foreign or domestic, they're concerned about the safety of their investment. They're concerned that they'll be able to get the, their money back. When it comes to domestic investors, they would want protection against inflation. You know, you know, you've got to protect their value of their money. Mm -hmm. When it comes to foreign investors, they obviously would want to be assured that their investments are safe in the country and they would obviously be paid back in terms of dividends, interest and principal on the loans in US dollars. So those are some of the big macroeconomic issues that we must address mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we are moving towards deploy, you know, you know, thinking of deploying such capacity mm -hmm. uh, in a short time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tafazo Victor is, is, is mentioning, you know, the issue of the relationship between FDI and also the local investment. Um, do you agree that the local investor is a good preamble towards stimulating foreign direct investment? Definitely. Um, so, look, uh, foreign investors in general, if they, if they are to come and invest in any jurisdiction, they also need local partners. And the local partners must have capacity. They must also be able to carry their weight. Uh, they must have their own skin in the game in terms of what they've invested as Zimbabweans in order for the, for the foreigners to come through. Um, going back to the issue of the 1,100 megawatts, we're talking of basically the ability of the country to raise, about, uh, to raise money to put up about 165 megawatts of, of the power. Mm -hmm. um, that's, our bit as, that's our bit of skin in the game in terms of attracting the, the investors. If Zimbabweans believe in Zimbabwe, then foreigners are going to believe in Zimbabwe along the Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. So we need to, 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 take, uh, to take a lead in terms of deploying this technology 
at whatever capacity, even if we start off with one megawatt, five megawatts, 10 megawatts, whatever the case might be, it's now easier because uh, when the foreigners are coming through, they're just coming to add capacity to what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. That way, uh, there's proper skills transfer and uh, there's also a lot of participation from the local banks, the pension funds, different institutional investors. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've got a scenario in the country where uh, we've got, you know, institutional investors that are largely uh, investing in uh, domestic real estate. If you look at uh, the return on investment on domestic real estate, it's quite subdued because of the disposable income. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking of US dollar, US dollar backed assets, you know, a cash generating asset that they can participate in. It's going to be giving returns over a period of 25 years. So it makes a lot of sense for us to pitch to, to the local banks, pitch to the pension funds, pitch to uh, uh, institutional investors to participate uh, alongside us as independent power producers as they also need our technical know-how mm -hmm. in terms of taking a lead. It's generally uh, a green field for, for, for the country, but uh, with efforts from, uh, from Coma Victor here, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's opened up, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, now, uh, there's now a test case. So it's a matter of showing them the asset as it is working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you you want to add? I need to reinforce that point mm -hmm. about local investors taking a lead. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've seen Sorgas, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, we as Central Grid, we're doing what we're doing. We also have got other local investors. We are not here like Nyangani Renewable that mm -hmm, we know. Mm -hmm. It's very important that whatever small facilities, renewable energy power plants we have built as local investors, it's very important that we support them as Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any local investor, any foreign investor before they come into the country, what they want to see is that the there's a market. Facilities mm -hmm. that have been built by the local investors, mm -hmm. they're operating properly, they're selling electricity, they're being paid at an appropriate tariff that protects the investments. Mm -hmm. Point being, if the facilities that have been built by local investors are not even operating properly, what are our chances of now attracting foreign investors to mm -hmm. come into the country. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I second that point. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very important that when we have got these domestic facilities built, you know, with great hardships mm -hmm. by investors like mm -hmm. us, we must support them as a country mm -hmm. before we even start pitching to foreign investors. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I like that point. Mm -hmm. I, I know that the, the issue of uh, there's a power deficit in Zimbabwe, not just in Zimbabwe, but also Southern Africa. Uh, I know Zimbabwe alone has more than 600 uh, megawatts in, in terms of deficit. The issue of the market for the power, is it there as an opportunity for us to invest in this Ab sector? Absolutely no doubt. I mean, the number of inquiries that, you know, are coming in from foreign investors Number one for you know expansion of their their facilities, smelters, uh, you know you know large uh, intensive users. Mm -hmm. Talk about even just the domestic industry as it is. We all talk about capacity utilization in the country. We know that our industry as it is right now is operating at whatever number twenty mm -hmm. thirty percent. It's not too productive. It's just not productive at all. Imagine without even any additional capacity but just increasing our capacity utilization to numbers 50 60 percent the amount of electricity that we would require right now we are in a shortage we know that the reason why we are getting power constantly in our homes is because whatever industry was operating is not operating because of covid issues mm -hmm. but we know that once we go out of that situation we're back again in darkness in our homes mm -hmm. as we talk right now we're importing what three hundred or so megawatts from neighboring countries, from Mozambique, from South Africa. The market is huge for the country. Mm -hmm. Right now, just you're looking at the kind of shortage that we have as a country, uh, like you said, about 600 megawatts, but not only 600 megawatts, a lot of suppressed demand as well because of the low utilization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So effectively, as a country, we probably could consume easily 
another 1,000 to 1,500 megawatts without any major changes. Mm -hmm. Going forward, of course, the country must keep on growing. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's scope for this kind of uh, mm -hmm. power. Now, gentlemen, obviously you, you have uh, you know, entities that uh, are actually active on the ground and uh, bringing out output in terms of electricity. Um, can you tell us you know, your journey and uh, some of the challenges that you met how did you manage to actually get, uh, you know, financiers coming in on board um, to actually finance? Because Victor does highlight that, you know, finance is one critical uh, barrier. Look, um, initially when we started uh, looking for funding in Soul Gas, uh, that was end of 2016, we were talking to a lot of uh, foreign investors because naturally that's, you know, it's, it's one of the natural things to do, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it's, uh, it's, it's equipment uh, that's, that requires uh, foreign currency and no better way of getting foreign currency, foreign currency but than from a, from a, from a foreigner. Mm -hmm. um, but we quickly realized that it was a difficult sell because there were questions that the foreigners would ask um, that uh, would struggle to answer. You know, it's, it's an issue about if I bring in a million dollars today into Zimbabwe, uh, what guarantees are you going to give me that when I want to take it out, I'm able to take it out? Mm -hmm. It then forced us in a way to start looking at other, at other options that were available to us. Fortunately, uh, we managed to, to get a local pension fund um, that was interested uh, in renewable energy as, you know, as, as, as the cool kid on the blog. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, also s it also spoke to the CSR um, also part, uh, mm -hmm. part of their climate change initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, so we partnered with, uh, with this local pension fund and uh, they have funded uh, the first phase of our, of our project. Um, but uh, like, what, uh, like what Victor said earlier on, uh, the real issue is uh, now that we are about to commission our first five megawatts on the 31st of August, um, when we then want to expand Add another 15 megawatts. We're talking of circa, you know, anything between 13 to 15 million US dollars mm -hmm. just on the PV plant site, mm -hmm. um, without looking at at, at, at the interconnection. Um, are we realistically going to, going to be able to raise that kind of money in in this in this environment uh, from the local players? So it's it's now a matter of using the capacity that we've developed for the five megawatt mm -hmm. to leverage and uh, and bring in the foreign the foreign partner. But the foreign partner is not just dependent on us as soil gas, on our skills. Mm -hmm. It now also depends on the macro, macroeconomic environment. Um, the ministry is pushing, uh, is pushing quite a lot in terms of supporting uh, independent power producers. Um, the government is also, is, is also pushing. But look, there, there are certain things that we feel uh, energy being a, pri being a primary uh, indicator of development mm -hmm. uh, needs to take the center stage. For any investment, uh, even outside energy, to make sense, we have to have power. Our mm -hmm. industry is operating at 20% capacity right now. If you look at our import bill, some of the things that we're importing are quite, you know, are quite sad. Um, how do we get out of that situation? We have to invest uh, and put the right environment for, for people that want to invest in energy, to invest in energy in order for the industry to be able to then tap in to that energy capacity to produce everything that's on the import bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, 80 to 90 percent of the money that you raise for PV solar uh -huh. uh, must be in foreign currency because you... This is the current reality. It, this is the current reality. We hardly manufacture anything of not in the country that goes into a PV uh, power plant, into mm -hmm. the construction of a PV power plant whether it is panels, inverters, wrecking structure, even the steel. Mm -hmm. You know, we closed our steel plant a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bolts, nuts, cables, you know, you name it. You've got to import almost 80 to 90 percent, he can confirm that, of all the inputs that go into your PV solar plant. Mm -hmm. so, so obviously I'm picking that there's, there's a huge potential for input substitution, just like Tafadwa, um, you know, highlights. What needs to be done to then stimulate this? Well, you know what, we could, you know, just, just, like, just like anything else, we could, you know, th there's much that can also be done, uh, you, you know, to support local industry. Um, we've got, you know, cable manufacturing companies here, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to support them so that we don't uh, continue importing certain things that we can get locally. But even them, 
they're also importing a lot of what goes into their manufacturing. So it all speaks back to, you know, the, the financing sort of, uh, you, know, you know, environment, you know, the conditions. Uh, if you are going to start manufacturing solar panels into this country, mm -hmm. are we going to be competitive and things like that? I don't really believe that is the direction, but you know what, you can try it. But at the end of the day, you are competing against very large manufacturers, you mm -hmm. know, manufacturing almost for the whole world sitting in China mm -hmm. uh, at a fraction of the cost uh, that you'll be manufacturing it locally. So for me, you know, you know, our initial sort of push right now may not necessarily be manufacturing locally, but it may be creating conditions for investment, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to import. So whether you raise money domestically, like Tafazo said, you know, from a local pension fund, are you able to convert that money into foreign currency? Number one, at market rates, at close to market rates as possible, mm -hmm. so that 80 to 90% of your money goes to purchase of equipment. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Whether you get that money from a foreign investor, the next question still remains, are you able to pay back that foreign investor? Mm -hmm. Again, in US dollars, that you procure domestically at market rates. So, so those, are, those are the issues that we must continue to focus on. You know, once we solve those challenges, listen, blessing, we're not the only country which is pushing for renewable energy. Right now, if you look at the capacity in Mozambique, it's now almost going to close to 100 megawatts of PV solar. Mm -hmm. Zambia, you know, they also have got now almost hundreds of megawatts of PV solar. Mm -hmm. Namibia, you know, South Africa, we don't even talk about them. You know, it's happening all around our neighbors. Not because they're manufacturing, you know, the inputs, but because they've created conditions that will attract both domestic and foreign, and foreign yeah. investors to be mm -hmm. able to come in and finance these programs. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. And it's not, you know, a question that is just, uh, you, know, in, in, you know, applied to anybody. It's a national question. As you know, this issue doesn't only affect the deployment of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. It affects the whole economy, exactly the points that you're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. once we address that question, even the issue of import substitution when it comes to manufacturing takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. So this is the national question that we must sit down together as a nation and find a solution mm -hmm. to. Create an enabling environment in order to stimulate more uh, output from renewable energy, more uptake and certainly more investment uh, to bring out uh, more in terms of uh, the country's GDP, uh, GDP contribution. Um, Green is Gold is the program brought to you by Hevos uh, in partnership with ZTN. Today we're looking at uh, exploring the full potential of uh, Zimbabwe's renewable energy sector. After this uh, short break, we will be looking at some of the incentives uh, that can be taken to actually stimulate more uptake of renewable energy. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Life will never be the same again. Absolutely. No. How do you tell someone in Mbaria or uh, in, uh, in Soweto uh, that uh, they should exercise social distancing? Mm. Every single one of us, barring a few, are praying more. What, what is the, yeah. the health economic cost of what we are trying to achieve? I don't know whether his chairman knows he runs at about 9 <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, I've, I've just got the symptoms, so I just called the doctor and I just uh, and then he just advised me to have to stay at home, eh? Welcome back to the program, Green as Gold, brought to you by Hivos in partnership with uh, ZTN Zim Papers Television Network. Today we're looking at exploring the full potential of Zimbabwe's renewable energy sector. And uh, just before the break, uh, we had uh, Victor telling us uh, about, you know, the... Um, 
the capacity or the rather the potential that lies with us, you know, stimulating the renewable energy sector by creating an enabling environment. I just want you to comment maybe on some of the incentives that are there for IPPs currently. Okay, through the, <coughs> through the recent um, national, uh, national Renewable Energy Policy, um, uh, the Ministry has made it uh, mandatory that all renewable energy, all new renewable energy projects uh, will be getting uh, national project status and uh, preserved asset status. So what uh, the national project status does is it, um, it, it, it gives tax incentives to, to, lo to IPPs, both foreign and, and, and local. Um, we're looking at uh, tax breaks uh, in terms of the income tax. Um, you pay you pay zero percent for the first five years of the of the project. Then from year six up until year eleven, uh, it goes to fifteen percent. Then from year eleven up until the expiration of um, of, of the license, uh, that's year twenty five, it, it it goes to to the normal income tax. Uh, when importing uh, your solar equipment, uh, it's coming in duty free, free or VAT. Um, uh, look, uh, the, the the national uh, renewable energy policy also talks of uh, the ministry trying to set up uh, a nodal agency mm -hmm. to try and uh, and quicken the processes in terms of the pre-development phase and the development phases of the project. Mm -hmm. Look, we're losing quite a lot of unnecessary time uh, in the pre-development and development phases of the project. I must uh, comment that look, there's been a, a concerted effort. Uh, both from uh, from the regulator side and uh, from uh, ZDC, for example, as the off-taker of mm -hmm. power. Um, but look, some of the some of the challenges can can be taken care of through uh, through that uh, through that nodal agency, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that it's it's sort of like a one-stop shop. You're just going in there, uh, you negotiate with uh, with with a group of people that are, that are sitting in the same room, and you're taking care of all all your statutory obligations mm -hmm. under under one roof. That mm -hmm. will go a long way. Uh, in in attra attracting uh, investors, because when when you when you talk of re uh, of uh, of investing in renewable energy, we're competing on the international stage. Um, there's, there, there has to be a reason why uh, why an investor chooses Zimbabwe over mm -hmm. Namibia, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that is time, uh, it's money, it's costs, um, it's uh, these incentives that we're talking about. With the preserved asset status, now uh, you're able to tap into um, uh, funds from, from your pension funds, uh, from your insurance companies, mm -hmm. because these institutions are collecting money on behalf of third parties, mm -hmm. and they, have to, they operate within a certain environment, certain p parameters, uh, in order for them to be able to, to, to be allowed to invest in private companies. Mm -hmm. These are all welcome, uh, uh, welcome, um, Welcome events that, uh, and welcome initiatives that have come from from uh, the government, Ministry of Finance, Minister of Energy. Um, more needs to be done, uh, obviously, uh, in terms of then addressing uh, uh, in, in, uh, investment incentives. You know, there has to be uh, there has to be uh, guarantees around uh, around issues to foreign currency because when you're talking of renewable energy. Uh, to deploy the capital, you need foreign currency. Mm -hmm. uh, the tariffs uh, are indexed in, in, in foreign currency. If it's, an, if it's a foreign investor, uh, they want to be paid in foreign currency to take away uh, some of the problems to do with, uh, with in hyperinflation mm -hmm. and also just to, to level out uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 co the, the competing uh, field mm -hmm. because we are competing against other nations and there's a, there's a common currency when you're competing at, at a global stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People don't want to compete uh, in Zimbabwe using a Zim dollar mm -hmm. and when they mm -hmm. go to Namibia, uh, they use the Namibian dollar in South Africa. So the universal uh, competing mm -hmm. currency is the US dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, problems around that, the issue of tariffs, um, I know recently you, you were under hot commissioning, the issue that he was talking about, you know, the efficiency, the turnaround, the one-stop shop. Um, what are the challenges that come with, you know, the setup that we have in Zimbabwe? We, we're charging our tariffs, you're giving to the grid, but you're, be, you're being given uh, maybe knockoffs in terms of RTGS dollar. Okay. Just, just on the sort of, you know, licensing framework, you know, pre-development work and mm -hmm. things like that. I personally have got nothing to fault on our system, mm -hmm. on our procurement system. It's open, mm -hmm. it's transparent. Um, anybody can apply for a license in this country mm -hmm. as long as you meet sort of the requirements which are set out on the Zera website 
very straightforward requirements. You know, there are difficulties like anything else, but uh, this is why you've got close to almost 60 entities that have been licensed, licensed um, by Zera. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't cost a lot of money, by the way. You know, it's just a few sort of hundreds or thousands of dollars you can get your license mm -hmm. in a very fair and transparent process. In fact, so open that, you know, there was even an outcry when some other people were given licenses that other people didn't want to get licenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It reinforces that point. If you want a license and you meet the requirements in this country, you get it. Okay? Mm -hmm. But there is a structural break in the whole cycle that uh, results in the deployment of you know, infrastructure, renewable energy in this case. Um, I would like to focus on what the government can do to make these programs work. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the example of South Africa. Let me tell you how it happens in South Africa. They've got a renewable energy procurement program, a very successful one that has resulted in the deployment of thousands of megawatts, uh, billions and billions of US dollars in that country. The way the procurement is done, is done through the government, which is the same thing in our country here. Mm -hmm. It's also open procurement through the regulator, number one. Number two, they've got standard sort of agreements, you know, power purchase agreement, etc., etc., and an implementation agreement with the government, meaning to say that once you have been selected to be one of the parties that will supply renewable energy, the government of South Africa guarantees payments to the investor, even though the actual power purchase agreement is with ESCOM. Mm -hmm. The end result is that to the investor, they are really lending to the government of mm -hmm. South Africa. That's a lot of security. They are really mm -hmm. investing in the good faith and credit mm -hmm. of the government of South Africa. To the extent that the utility is unable to perform, the government of South Africa says, hey, here I am. I'll take care of this. Mm -hmm. That is the undertaking that is necessary and required by any government that is pushing uh, renewable energy programs. This is what we have seen in Nigeria when it comes to the deployment of the, their large sort of uh, uh, power programs. We've mm -hmm. seen it in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in Zambia. We've seen it in Mozambique. It is happening in Namibia. There is no way that the government can sort of have, have a hands-off approach and say, you take care of yourselves when it comes to these issues. So I'm saying that, yes, we could have issues with licensing. Personally, I've never faced an issue with Zera. Mm -hmm. I've worked with almost 20 regulatory authorities across the continent. I vouch with my life that Zera is one of the best run uh, regulators in the continent. Uh, he would confirm, everybody knows, mm -hmm. there is not even scope for paying a dollar of bribes to Zera. For what? Mm -hmm. It's very straightforward, you get your license. Again, I repeat, this is why you've got 60 licensed entities here. And in fact, it can be more as long as you apply for the license. So licensing and everything else, mm -hmm. we are fine. Mm -hmm. What we now need to have uh, as a conversation is, but what role can government play? Particularly when it comes to attracting foreign investors mm -hmm. so that we can pay back their money, number one, in US dollars. And number two, even though our tariff, this is very important, it is denominated in US dollars. But when it comes to the actual payments, we are now paid in local currencies at whatever is the official rate. Doesn't matter what it is, but the issue is whatever we've been paid in local currencies, we need a mechanism whereby we can take that local money and access dollars at market rates. When mm -hmm. I'm saying market rates, it means if I'm paid at 1 to 25, which is the official rate. Which is the official rate, blessing. When I want to access the foreign uh, when, currency. When I want to access the foreign currency, mm -hmm. I must also go to the banks mm -hmm. and access the same money at the same rate, mm -hmm. at or near market rates, mm -hmm. so that I'm able to pay back my obligations. Now, this is the structural break that we have not managed to solve. How do I know that? Because we've been operating for more than a year. Mm -hmm. We are getting money in local currency but we are failing to convert that money into 
dollars so that we can pay back our dollar denominated obligations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So until we solve that, again I repeat, for the local projects that are operational right now, mm -hmm. no matter how small they are, they're not many, mm -hmm. maybe three, four, whatever it is, until we solve it for the few power plants that are operating in the country, mm -hmm. it is hard for us to then go out to local, to foreign investors mm -hmm. and say, we've got a 500 megawatt program, come. We've got a 1,000 megawatt program, come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we can't make things work for the few facilities that are operating domestically. So my point is, those, that, that's the structural problem that we have got to solve. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once we solve that, and it's working with the facilities that we have, it's easy now to roll it out to a bigger program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you just want to add? Mm -hmm. just, just, just to add what, to, to what, what Victor just said, uh, you know, um, there's now this, the, when, when the SI85 of 2020 was introduced, you know, it allowed basically everyone to make their payments in uh, in U.S. dollars locally. Mm -hmm. So what what that meant is, um, if you if you have to go to a to, to a bank right now, and you want to access foreign currency at the interbank, they've got they've got nothing to you know to, to support us as you know as as IPPs that actually want to make payments to to our contractors uh, mm -hmm. and to our investors out there. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are some of the challenges that we are facing uh, on the ground. Um, because uh, the, the, the companies that used to uh, deploy or that used to sell their money uh, at, at the interbank, they're not doing that anymore because it is cheaper for them to make their payments in U.S. dollars mm -hmm. than, than to, to make their payments in, in Zim dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are, those, those are some of the, the issues that, that, that we're facing on the ground. Look, um, I believe that at, at government level, uh, if some of these statutory instruments are being, uh, is, is they are being planned or is they are being rolled out. You need to look at specific sectors like energy. To say, okay, can't we make an exception, you know, for, for, for players that really need uh, this type of support in terms of foreign currency? Mm -hmm. Because we've deployed uh, U.S. dollars to, to get the equipment. The tariff is indexed in U.S. dollars, but mm -hmm. in real terms, uh, the return on investment is, 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 is bad. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, the amount of money uh, that I've outlaid vis-a-vis -vis what I'm not getting in the local currency. There's a disparity. Uh, uh, there's mm -hmm. a disparity. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Unless if the, if, if the central government or the local banks are going to say, for whatever payments um, that you've gotten from the utility company at a, at a rate of 25, mm -hmm. we're also going to facilitate and make sure that you know you get uh, you get uh, foreign currency at 25 when you want to expand mm -hmm. your your power plant or when you want to uh, to pay to pay uh, to pay loans mm -hmm. that you foreign loans that you've gotten into the country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the issue of, of fiscal policy is 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 quite key um, this is what i'm picking looking at uh, you know the trend in africa you've been around a, a few nations um, w what are some of the best practices that we can actually take on board Exactly like I said, look at the South Africa model. Mm -hmm. The government must always stand behind the obligations of the national utility. Mm -hmm. you, ca you, can't, you can't escape from that. In the case of Zimbabwe, a foreign investor will come, bring in you know, equipment, money, etc. is deployed. Mm -hmm. The next question blessing is, how do you pay it back? Okay? Mm -hmm. So th there are two ways to this. Either the intensive users, the large customers, mm -hmm. because in this country they are already compelled to buy their electricity in US dollars. One of the methods would be maybe pull those dollars into an account for the specific benefit of repaying the investors. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. One of the methods is let them pay that into, you know, maybe a local account so that you'll be able to access that money. It is actually escrowed away for the benefit of the investors with the government support. So I, I, I must emphasize and reinforce this point. Government undertaking for the provision of foreign currency mm -hmm. and market rates is very important uh, mm -hmm. for programs like this. And here is one uh, difficulty when it comes to this kind of schemes, uh, infrastructure financing. Mm -hmm. You are always looking for long-term financing at the very minimum 10 to 15 years debt financing. Mm -hmm. And of course, longer commitments for equity investors up to 25 years. Mm -hmm. 
So you're not looking for one-time solutions that can work this year. You're not looking for exemptions whereby, you know, what, what can we do? Can we allocate you money? That works when you are in construction. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the actual repayment of interest principal and dividend to investors, they want to see commitments that can work for a very long time with government support, with minimum interference mm -hmm. in those schemes over a very mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we need to put in place. Mm -hmm. We've seen our neighbors doing that in Mozambique, in South Africa. And guess what happens when they make such tough decisions to put those schemes together? Foreign investors, they now come, invest in their countries, in the renewable energy. And when we don't do that, guess what happens? We don't grow our power fleet. Mm -hmm. We are forced to import. Who are we importing from? Think about it very carefully. It's from the national utilities of our neighboring countries mm -hmm. who are being supplied by private investors like mm -hmm. Tafadzwa mm -hmm. sitting in Mozambique. Mm -hmm. Private investors sitting behind ESCOM in South Africa. So when we are importing, what we are actually doing is taking the foreign currency to give to private investors in South Africa. Mm -hmm. When we of, could be mm -hmm. doing that domestically. And again, mm -hmm. it's not a cliche. When we import power, we are really exporting jobs. Mm -hmm. Young, youthful jobs, skilled jobs mm -hmm. for local Zimbabweans mm -hmm. that will benefit this country. There is a direct correlation between the amount of power that you have in the country and the GDP. Mm -hmm. If we don't grow our capacity, mm -hmm. we're not growing our GDP. When you're not growing your GDP, it means you're not growing jobs. It means you're not growing your economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these may sound like tough policies, but they're necessary mm -hmm. for transforming our economy. Mm -hmm. Victor mentions debt equity models, um, and most importantly, he mentions the issue of human resources. And, uh, you know, renewable energy is in a technical uh, space. The issue of skills gap. Um, what's your comment? You know what? Um, the sad thing is that uh, we're in construction right now. If you, if you, go, if you come to our construction site, um, part of the key personnel that are working on our site are Zimbabweans. But these Zimbabweans are working for South African companies, for example, mm -hmm. because we don't have jobs. It points back to what Victor, Victor has just said right now. Mm -hmm. The issue has never been about uh, the lack of human resources. It's always been about the lack of job employment opportunities, which we are fighting to create locally. Um, what we need is the support that Victor mentions, right, m m mentioned ju ju just, just now. You know, at the end of the day, um, we can go as far as even importing those little skills that we might not have necessarily in Zimbabwe because we've got the right economic environment. If anyone can come and thrive in Zimbabwe, then the HR, the HR issues are, are, are addressed immediately, mm -hmm. uh, of which I don't believe there's a lack of it. I've been to two construction sites here in Zimbabwe, and always there's always a Zimbabwean who's, who's leading in terms of uh, the implementation, implementation technically on the ground. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So uh, that HR, HR is not a problem. Mm -hmm. We've got good human resources, uh, but most of our human resources are out there. Uh, they've been We're exporting uh, them. We exported mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Now let's bring them back by just addressing the macro macroeconomic environment and stimulating our own local production. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we're heading to the to the to the end of the program. Um, I'll kindly ask you to to, to give your closing submissions. Um, uh, starting with you, Victor. I personally think one thousand one hundred megawatts uh, of renewable energy by twenty twenty five is very feasible. Mm -hmm. It's technically feasible. It can be deployed within that time frame. Absolutely no problem. But uh, we must come together as a national question. What incentives are we going to put in place? What assurances are we going to provide to foreign investors and domestic investors to be able to tr attract that kind of money? to be able to support such a scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, everything else, legislation, technical, uh, human resources, capacity, the desire for this country, the market is there. But what are we going to do to attract that money? To me, that is the key question. And once we solve that, 
we are solving the issue of growth, the issue of employment, uh, we are solving all the big macroeconomic questions mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 need to, that, that, are, that, that need to drive this uh, economy going forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Victor Tedzi, uh, Central Grid uh, Director, thank you so much for uh, those remarks. Uh, Look, um, it goes without saying, necessity is the mother of all invention. Mm -hmm. It's necessary, absolutely necessary right now, for us to deploy renewable energy. Uh, ZET DC, uh, they're planning a 500 megawatt uh, tender mm -hmm. to invite both local and foreign investors to come and participate. But what Zimbabwe actually needs right now, it needs people like Victor, people like myself, to be able to testify and say, if you come to Zimbabwe, the, the, inv the investment environment is conducive mm -hmm. for, your, for your investment. Mm -hmm. There are very difficult questions that have to be answered. And until such a time that we are able to objectively answer those questions, questions around foreign currency risk, uh, then it's going to be a tough sell to attract good investors that are actually going to come and deploy the technology. Private players are in the business of generating energy based on income based on return on investment. What we need to focus on is to give them the return on investment that they're looking for in US dollar terms. And part of the solution is what are we doing for the local independent power producers that are already operational? Because these are the same people that the foreign investors, when they come into Zim, they would want to partner. Mm -hmm. They have developed uh, a skin in the game. They've developed an understanding of the environment. Mm -hmm. If you are to go to Mozambique, I'm sure you'd want to work with Mozambicans just to navigate the environment. This is exactly what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Tafaz, thank you so much uh, for many uh, quite insightful points uh, that uh, you gave us through the program. Uh, Victor, once again, thank you. Thank you so much thank for coming to the program. We are uh, coming to the end of the program. Green as Gold, uh, brought to you by ZTN in partnership with Hivos, uh, People Unlimited. Today we were exploring the full potential of Zimbabwe's renewable energy sector and we had two gentlemen in studio to help us understand the challenges, opportunities in the sector and of course uh, opportunities to move to clean energy sector uh, going forward. Hearty thanks also to our partner Hivos who made this broadcast possible uh, through their green and inclusive energy program that seeks to stimulate and enable uh, Southern Africa's energy transition towards renewable energy technology. You can visit their website, hevos.org. Uh, uh, their website is hevos.org uh, to find out more about their work and programs. This includes, of course, their green entrepreneurship program that is there to help establish business and support entrepreneurs who want to run uh, sound businesses with a focus on social and environmental impact. The investment vehicles, Hivos Impact uh, Investments and also Hivos uh, Triodos Fund uh, provide finance to accelerate the growth of exceptional SMEs. I'd like to thank my panelists for today. Once again, uh, Victor Otezi, Central Grid uh, Director, as well as Tafadzwa Mundicha, Chief Financial Officer and Co-Founder of Soul Gas. And not forgetting, of course, our viewers who follow the discussion through our social media platforms. Thank you for your thoughts and uh, comments. Green as Gold is back again next week. Uh, stay green. Stay safe. I'm Blessing Monazi. Goodbye.